In the next topic, we are focusing on relations. The definition of a relation, so let us explore the relation itself. Suppose you have two sets like A and B, a relation like R from set A to set B is basically a subset of the Cartesian product between A and B. So basically we are having an ordered pair or a sets of ordered pairs from the Cartesian product between two sets. We're going to say that, hey, the ordered pair like alpha and beta, which belongs to the Cartesian product between A and B, are in relation, and then we write alpha is in relation with beta if and only if alpha and beta belongs to that set. So again, when we're talking about a relation, we're talking about a set. The set of all first elements or the set A is called the domain of the relation. And set B, which is the set of all output values, is called the codomain, not necessarily the range. So remember that if you have two sets like A and B, the Cartesian product of A and B, which is denoted by A cross B, is the set of all ordered pairs like A and B, where A is in the first set and B is in the second set. Symbolically, we represent it this way. The Cartesian product between A and B is the set of, so we use curly brackets to represent the set, all ordered pairs, and this is such that, with condition that. So we read this small vertical line as such that, the property that we're imposing, the condition that we're imposing is that the very first element belongs to the first set and the second element belongs to the second set. Okay, now that we introduced relations, let's take a look at some notes. The domain of a relation like R is the set of all first elements of the order pairs belonging to R. The range of a relation R is the set of all second elements of the ordered pair belonging to the relation R. For example, suppose A is a set including one and two, B is a set including one, two, three, four. We're gonna define T as a relation from set A to set B, such that A is in relation with B if and only if A is more than equals to B. So A and B. First of all, two is more than one. So definitely two is in relation with one. This can be also expressed as the ordered pair two and one belongs to set T. Please note that one is also more than or equals to one. So you can say that the ordered pair one and one belongs to this relation T. The entire relation T can be written this way. T, as we mentioned as a relation, is a set. It includes one and one, two and one, and please note that two is more than equals to two, so two and two. You cannot compare one and three in the sense that one is more than equals to three. It's not true. We cannot compare two and three here as well because two is not more than three. So we have to ignore the rest of these two numbers. We can also just compare one and one, two and one, two and two. So this relation only has three members. If I ask you to write down the domain, the domain is just including one and two. The codomain is set B itself but when it comes to the range, range also has just one and two. So for the domain, the collection of all first elements, you have one, and also you have two, but since two is repeated here, we're gonna write one, two. The codomain is all of B, but the range is including one and two. One as the second entry, and since it's repeated here, we're not going to take two and two, as the second entry here, 
which is written in the range. So as you can see, range and domain in this special case are the same. But please note that range and codomain, these two are not necessarily equal to each other. And please remember that if I ask you to find a Cartesian product between A and B, the Cartesian product between A and B includes all of these numbers. One and one, one and two, one and three, one and four, two and one, two and two, two and three, two and four. Out of all of these ordered pairs entries, we selected the ones that satisfy this relation. A is more than equals to B. One is more than equals to one. One is not more than equals to two. One is not more than equals to three. One is not more than equals to four. Two is more than equals to one. Two is more than equals to two, but two is not more than equals to three. Two is not more than equals to four. So we just get one, two, three elements in this relation. That's how we define relation T, and these are the elements of relation T. So you can define some random relations this way. No one's stopping you. Now that we talked about the relation between two sets, which is basically a subset of Cartesian product between A and B, I'm going to give you the function f of x equals to x squared. This is basically a parabola which opens up. This is a relation, as you can see, on R. So this function takes on values from the real line and map them to value on the real line. Just positive and zero. This is basically a relation. All of these points or their pairs are members of this relation. So you saw relations many times in algebra, but now we are talking about some relations that might have no recognizable pattern or some of them have recognizable pattern like this case that you can see here. Another one for you, the set of points x and y in the plane such that they satisfy the relation x squared plus y squared equals to one. And as you can see, this is nothing but the unit circle. All of the points satisfying this relation forms the unit circle, and this is indeed a relation in xy plane. Another one for you, consider the set of all points like x and y in the plane with the following property. y is more than equals to x, or x is less than equals to y. This is indeed a relation on R, which is a subset of the plane. From algebra, we can easily visualize this relation as the points in this shaded region. So here you have another set of points which forms a relation here. Other than relations, we have functions. When you're talking about a function, this machine takes on values from the domain like x and gives you some output values like f of x. Let us take a look at some definitions here. A function like f from a set A to set B is indeed a relation. First of all, it's a bunch of points in xy plane. The domain is A and the codomain is B. That satisfies the following two important properties. First of all, for every element x in the domain, there is an element like y in the codomain such that this ordered pair belongs to this relation. So F is a relation, it's a bunch of points. And two, for all elements like X in the domain and Y and Z in codomain, if X and Y are in relation and X and Z are in relation, 
indeed you can conclude that the second components are both the same. So this is basically saying that, hey, we have vertical line test satisfied. So a function acts like a machine. You have some input values. It makes some changes to those input values and give you some output values. You saw functions before, for example, a square function. This function, this machine takes X values and gives you X to the second power. The set of relations are larger than the set of functions. All functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. If A and B are sets and F is in function from A to B, then given any element like X in A, the unique element in B that is related to X by F is denoted by F of X. So you saw this in algebra, it's nothing new. For example, if x is the domain of function f, function f takes some values from the domain and gives you some output values in the codomain. These points, these numbers are in the range of the function, which is a subset of the codomain. Let's take a look at example. Consider A to be the set including 2, 4, 6, and B with the set including 1, 3, and 5. Which one is a function? Okay, the very first relation says, hey, I have this bunch of points, 2 and 5, 4 and 1, 4 and 3, 6 and 5. Indeed, R is not a function. Why is that? The ordered pairs like 4 and 1, and 4 and 3, they both have the exact same input values, but their output values are different from each other. Here you have a 3, and here you have a 1. So it doesn't satisfy the definition of a function. We can take a look at the graph as well. This relation takes 2, and it gives you 5. This relation takes 4, and it gives you one. Also, it takes four, gives you three back. It takes six and gives you five. But remember that four and one, four and three, one and three are not the same. So basically, it doesn't satisfy the definition of a function. This is just a bunch of points in XY plane. We don't have any issue with that being a relation, but it's not a function. There are two arrows coming out of four. One points to one, and the other one points to three. So since one and three are not equal to each other, it is not a function. So let us go back to A and B as the sets. We're gonna define a relation this way. We're gonna say that, hey, X and Y belongs to relation S, it means that x plus 1 is equal to y. As you remember, this is just an increasing line, right? This is a linear relation between x and y. s is not a function. It's not true that every element of a is the first element of an ordered pair in S. For example, six belongs to the domain, but if you plug in six here, six plus one becomes seven, but I don't have any seven in the second set. So when you're talking about functions, please make sure you are closely monitoring the domain and the range. If I plug in two, my y becomes 3, which is there. If I plug in 4, my y becomes 5, which is just right here. But if I plug in 6 from the domain, my y becomes 7, which is not in the codomain. 
So basically this guy is not a function. But if you change this to R and R, the real line, you basically have a linear relation between X and Y, which is indeed a function. So basically here, we are mapping A to B using S. A has two, two by S goes to three, maps to three. Four by S maps to five, but there is no connection for six. Very good. Let's take a look at one last example. T is defined by the arrow diagram below. The relation T is defined as it takes 2 and it gives you 5. It takes 4, it gives you 1. It takes 6 and it gives you 1. T is a function. Each element from the domain is mapped to something to the codomain. The domain is 2, 4, 6 and the range is 1 and 5 and the codomain is 1, 3 and 5. So as you can see, it satisfies both properties for a function and indeed this relation is a function. And again, please pay attention. The range and the codomain doesn't have to be the same. Here you have an element like three, which belongs to the codomain, but it's not in the range, which is absolutely fine. Here we can write down t of 2 equals to 5, t of 4 equals to 1, t of 6 also equals to 1. And indeed, you defined a function as easy as that. So your function doesn't have to be a complicated function. You can take some, some points from the domain and maps them to some elements in the codomain. As long as it satisfies true properties for a function, then you are fine. In the next slide, I'm going to show you a relation which you already saw before, x squared plus y squared equals to 1, which is representing a unit circle. And this guy is not a function. Why is that? Well, for one, it doesn't satisfy vertical line tests. If you have a vertical line, it has two intersections with the graph of this relation. So it doesn't pass vertical line tests. More specifically, if you look at some of the points, for example, if you plug in a half into this relation, y squared becomes a one minus one fourth or three over four and y becomes square root of 3 divided by 2, and negative square root of 3 divided by 2. So for a unique x value, you get two different y values. So it doesn't satisfy the second property of being a function. This is not a function. This is just a relation in the plane. 